This video better not make us look like a joke. We're actually part. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the scenes of Top 5. <laughs> I'm here with Tyler Froberg. Froberg, Fro Farmer Froberg? It's, Farmer Froberg. We're on Froberg, Froberg's Froberg farm. farm, but he's Farmer Froberg on the internet. We're gonna show you guys what his farm is like today. We've been here since 1936 on this ground, but have been in our area in the Alvin, Texas area for over a hundred years, growing strawberries, diversified fruits and vegetables, fruit trees, just to name a few. There's a lot of history behind this farm. It was like, we already did the tour. It's been awesome and crazy to see on the produce side of things because they're right outside of Houston. So they get a lot of opportunities to educate people that have never been to a farm before too. And you can see on the walls, we're gonna show you some history real quick too. Uh, in about 1895, my great grandparents came to this country from Germany. Uh, they landed in Galveston, settled here in Alvin. The big thing at that time was to grow uh, strawberries and figs. Figs were a big important uh, crop here in the area. Um, in 1936 my grandparents bought this place and at that time young men picked the strawberries for my grandpa uh in 1942 after world war ii started the draft took all the young men and he had no way of getting the crop harvested so he had a crazy idea he was gonna let people pick their own and from that day on we never did ship any more strawberries it was always pick your own and then after that they kind of people would come in and say hey you know if you'd grow tomatoes we'd buy your tomatoes or squash and then my dad uh was a professional wrestler and grandpa passed in 1960 and dad quit his professional wrestling career to go on to take over the farm and then i took over in 2000. that is my great grandfather who purchased this piece of ground in 1936. So this started right here, 1936, but you guys have been in Texas. In Alvin since like 1899, 1900. And there's my grandfather and my grandmother. Right there. And then the big guy just walked in the store. <laughs> oh, he's, he's hiding. Back there he's, yeah. he's zooming. <laughs> and so that is my uncle who took over after my grandfather passed away. Oh, there's the little baby farmer Froberg. <laughs> just look at, it just gives you the feel goods being in here. You see all the families and the memories. So Houston Chronicle, 1960, they grow them, you pick them. This was, you picked before you picked was cool. It's a necessity because there was a labor shortage during different times of war. And so, yeah, here it is. They made ten thousand a year. If you were making only ten thousand dollars a year, you'd be doing something else. <laughs> so here is the wrestling wall. The Coon Froberg. Coon Froberg. Come farm in the daytime, wrestle at nighttime. And the Rock's dad wrestled Farmer Froberg. Farmer Coon Froberg. Not that Farmer Froberg. Farmer Froberg. <laughs> They have a field report and this will get posted on their social media. So they'll have like temperature, sky, mud levels, availability. That's just because not everyone knows they come to a area like this and they might be like asking questions about the mud or where it's at or all that kind of thing. If they're not familiar with the farm, that kind of helps a little bit. So that's pretty smart. They have a bunch of plant starts in here as well for people to just take home and put in their own gardens. And then they have all these chips. So these are vacuum fried freeze dried so he was just telling me they fry them and then they'll take them in a vacuum and suck all the oil out of it and then freeze dry it and it retains the flavor so these sell really good and i think we're going to take some of these home and try them all right what have we got we got some okra we got some kale that's fresh okra not the frozen stuff we're frying it tonight. Yeah, we're gonna fry it tonight. Got roasted peanuts and okra, chips. and okra chips, roasted peanuts. I got some of these chips because those are road trip friendly and we're about to leave. So and they also have a bakery and their fried pies are really good. We're gonna put our big rubber boots on. <laughs> these are not mine. <laughs> okay, these are huge. I got my clown honkers on. Connor, you fit, you, bo you boots fit? <laughs> That's a thousand little chickens. 
in oh, there really? somewhere. You can go in there. At Froberg Farms, they raise chickens and they also produce 80 dozen eggs a day. They also have a greenhouse where they start plant starts for in their store. This greenhouse has emptied and been full six times since January 1st of 2023. Keep it nice and toasty in here. But because everything's already germinated, and pretty much everything in here is for, besides those peppers, those are our farm peppers. Everything else is in here is for our retail market. And they have primarily one person who starts these, keeps it organized. And then this is their area that they have for festivals, lots of games. So they just had their strawberry festival. This is where a lot of the festivities were held. The trash can. You just take the forklift on the tractor or the or it depends on where it is. You don't want to take the forklift on this. You put the forks on the tractor and go down to the dumpster. Works smart enough. Works smart enough. <laughs> this video better not make us look like a joke. We're actually far. <laughs> This is the Strawberry Express. <laughs> Those strawberries. <laughs> the only problem I can see here is that it's being pulled by a Kubota. Oh, <laughs> you definitely want to stick to the rail. Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> These boots are too big, so. Hey, yeah. Guys, yesterday, you would have had to have your sunglasses on because the dust was hitting you in the face. Today, they got an you sink rain. to your hand. The hair is on fleek. fields and give us a rundown of their setup so that is their green beans i believe and then they have cute little statues they have more beans strawberries lots of strawberries so like i was saying earlier they have their strawberry festival they have a bunch of people that come pick strawberries hang out at the farm thousands of people show up to the strawberry festival and you can see there's just tons of strawberries and there's also some of that mud from that inch of rain they got it was so muddy and then they have onions, potatoes. Now we're coming up on some thornless blackberries and we'll show you the production stage of these in the middle of March for Texas. And then here's another section right across from the blackberries that they just planted tomatoes in. They also have dates. And a sweet corn patch. So hopefully you're catching the vibe that they have a lot of everything here and it provides a lot of great opportunities for people to see diversified agriculture in one spot. And then this field is peas and right behind the field you'll see they're right in the middle of development so this isn't something that's tucked away in the middle of nowhere they're kind of you know right in the city or what's growing in to be the city because of urban development and it keeps getting better this is off of the main location we were just at but this is a christmas tree farm they grow them for four years and we'll show you what's up with this there's a fence there but there's airplanes sitting over here So with Christmas trees, they grow the cypress Christmas trees. They take four years to grow. This is the first year planting, second year planting, and then behind them is the third year and fourth year. So they'll get bigger as they progress, but and Christmas trees in March. It's always Christmas at Froberg's farm. <laughs> yeah. They got fried pies. What flavor is that, Caroline? This is strawberry cream. Oh, 10 out of 10. I had a pineapple one earlier. They're pretty good, but. So the question is try to get a tree that looks like it's flock. It's a variegated cypress and it's supposed to look flocked. So they don't have a flocker. So this is like Texas flocking. It's Texas flocking. <laughs> yeah. We don't have a flocker or real snow. So. <laughs> That's Texas snow. They put it in the genetics. <laughs> so here is the bigger trees. The little ones are over there. We've been making our way over here. Show five. 
this is a hypoallergenic Christmas tree? The, all of these are. They're all hypoallergenic. They're all hypoallergenic. Oh, I thought when he said hypoallergenic, we were smelling this one because this smells like Idaho. <laughs> so my little Idaho blonde brain was like, oh, hypoallergenic. But all of the Christmas trees are hypoallergenic, which is very good. Golf balls. <laughs> That is not a Christmas tree seed. All right, boys. <laughs> so the Christmas trees are over there. You come around the back and there's some oats. We don't like those as much as we like this. Oh yeah. There's your wheat. They planted this for kind of a cover. They were gonna have pigs on this, but they didn't have time this year, so. This is the biggest wheat field in this county of Texas. Owned by Froberg. <laughs> so what our largest crop is? Oh, Turnips okay. in the south. <laughs> These are out of season, so that's why they're looking a little bit rough. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so these are turnips right now. They're, they're not in season. Don't judge don't. them. <laughs> don't don't look at that. Don't look at that. We're just nope. <laughs> but they're gonna disc this in, add a lot of organic material to the soil see all that good stuff and then they're going to plant watermelons into it so they just have something year round going down here a kohlrabi kohlrabi german cabbage delicious delicious i don't think i'm gonna take my chances on it <laughs> oh we're about to he's getting the knife out <laughs> There was one time I felt adventurous and uh, open a chunk out of a sugar beet. I guess we're about to be adventurous again and take a chunk out of kohlrabi. <laughs> Just a bite. It's okay. kind of kind of. Have you ever tried the daikon? Okay, actually, it's good. It's kind of peppery. It's not what most people expect. Most people expect like a cabbage flavor. And that is squash. They put all the plastic on it because it's just less time in the field to weed and everything. I should have put a hat on today. Live, laugh, love. <laughs> so this used to be a runway right here. We're at the airport fields and uh, now they have grapes on it. So there's a hundred rows of grapes right here. So these are how the grapes are set up. Got your little supportive tubing. And then they'll grow it on the vine and the plan is you pick but if they get storms or something they always have a backup plan so it's not 100 percent determined on you pick but they can can it you know sell it other things other than you pick it's very uniform it's almost like they took auto steer down here but not quite <laughs> get back on our little kubota chariot <sighs> behind the scenes of papa <laughs> And then this is leaving. They have a little shed with saws and stuff for the Christmas trees and a little pavilion thing. So that's a grill marker. That's a smoker. Cultivator. And a They call it a hara in Texas. I believe it's a hair row. <laughs> <laughs> you two guys ride the seat and your plants sit on that tray. also have thorn varieties and these are retired chicken tractors and that is supposed to be more sweet corn there's some more beds haven't been planted yet here's the not their mean green spray machine but their uh mean orange spray machine i was talking about this one emma <laughs> This one, what does this one do then? That one sprays like the field. This spray, this is, this is spray also, sp oh, oh, this is, that one. I didn't even see this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the strawberry special mean orange killing machine. This, this, spray rig. this is the spray rig That's of the, the day. <laughs> Give you the tour. You got your spray <laughs> tank. You got your handheld cheat cheat. And then you got all this Kubota stuff. <laughs> On a serious note, you can't bring a big old John Deere or a big old Kubota, big, 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 big <laughs> Kubota sprayer in here. So they have to use this to go in between the rows because it's small. They gotta be resourceful. So it's kind of cute. It, it fits their operation. <laughs> Definitely not gonna fit some operation in North Dakota, you know, in wheat fields, but for them it works. <laughs> K 
Caroline out here with the hog level damage and the strawberry patches. <laughs> so you know when a, a strawberry is good when it's dripping. It's like a DQ blizzard test, but you want it to drip. <laughs> it missed the drip, but that's how you test it. And they've got plastic on their rows because it keeps the weeds out. It's just better maintenance. It looks cleaner. Heat as well. Heat? We were able to capture today's heat. We're able to capture that right there at the root zone. And it, do, it helps a little bit with moisture retention. So a little unconventional here, but they also grow potatoes on plastic. And as a little Idaho gal, I didn't know how to feel about that, but it makes sense. I also have onions on plastic. Just root it right up. That's a beautiful onion. That is a very beautiful onion. Sure. Give it a bite. Oh, are you for real? Yeah. <laughs> So this is their plastic layer. You're gonna sit your butt in that seat and then you keep pressure on it and you got a little knife to cut your plastic. That looks like something that would give you tetanus, but it's safe. <laughs> it's it's not hazard, that was just a joke, that was not stab. <laughs> There's your another hair. There's a hair row. <laughs> and then this is what they fumigate slash irrigate slash lay drip tape down with. So the drip tape roll goes up there, fumigation, and then shaping the rows right down there. Some will do their trash out when they park, so that's nice. Oh, lovely. Mm -hmm. So on Tyler's hat right here, you can see it kind of just looks like a green blob for some of you, but that's a tree. And then you look over here, and that's the tree that is on the hat. I guess it's on the strawberry package too. And that tree, his grandpa tried to plow down like four times with his horse in what year? Like a lot of years ago. My great grandpa. Your great grandpa. With his mule. Like three times. <laughs> Not a Kubota. Three seasons in a row and finally said forget about it. Just let it grow. And now it's farm around it. Yeah. So that is a very cool piece of little history. And now it's like, it used to be persimmon back there. Persimmons, okra, tomatoes. Yeah. And now it is part of some agritourism and their strawberry festival and everything else that they host on their farm. And this is what's going on with the strawberries from Froberg's. Little strawberry shortcakes. Oh yeah. Cheers. Cheers with the kale. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have for y'all today. Remember to check out Froberg's farm on the internet because they have a website and you can order online from them, see what the dates are for their festivals and a lot of other stuff that we may not have covered today. Be sure to check out Farmer Froberg, so not Froberg's Farm, that's uh, their website and the name of them. Farmer Froberg is Tyler, and you can check out his social medias for number five videos and a lot more that he puts out. He puts out really good content. And then, if you like this video, remember to subscribe to Ag with Emma so you don't miss any more of the adventures like farm tours and farm work that I'll be doing throughout the rest of the year and beyond that. So, as always, thanks for watching. Hasta la pasta.